Welcome to the Bear Down Podcast. My name is Kenzie Fowler Quinn, and joining us today is the trio of Arizona softball coaches. We have head coach Caitlin Lowe and assistants Lauren Lappin and Taryn Moat McKinney. Thank you so much for taking some time and joining us. I know your schedule is very busy, so we appreciate the time. Thanks for having us. Yeah. This is fun. Yeah. We don't get to do this together yeah. ever. Good. <laughs> Good. Let's see what they're going to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, Kate, we'll start with you. Just right now, season's around the corner. Um, can you take us through the day to day schedule of what's happening right now as we get ready for another season of Arizona softball? Well, it's an exciting time, and I was telling these two after practice yesterday, we went out to do outfield drill work and things that we do every week. They were amped to do it, and you can just tell season's around the corner. Um, they're ready and chomping at the bit to play someone else other than each other um, and really just play for the same team with the same goal. So I'm, I'm just excited for them and to see what this team looks like. Scrimmage is getting a little old at this point. Or? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, Lab, I'm just curious off season, long off season, of course, you're ready to play someone different. Um, there's a lot of new faces on this team, a lot of veteran returners, though, that have experience. But um, for some fans, who's someone that maybe had a really good off season that stands out to you that maybe might be flying under the radar a little bit? I think there are a handful. I mean, you know, even freshmen who come in with high expectations, highly rated, um, they still have yet to prove themselves at this level. And so, you know, the names that of Dakota Kennedy, who had a big fall for us, and our fans were already able to see what she can do on a softball field. Um, I think they've yet to see what Olivia Donardo can do. Um, Liv's a big, big time elite type of hitter. Um, so we're hoping she gets a lot of at-bats right away and can really show what she's capable of. But um, someone who we were lucky to get late, Kaya Altmeyer, she's she's really impressed us. Just um, her buy-in, first of all, uh, to this program. Uh, we didn't get her until mid-summer. And she joined that class and adapted really well. And she is all in Arizona Wildcat. And um, she's got a lot of different tools. She's fast and aggressive on the bases. And I think she's going to be someone who's fun to watch. She can do multiple things on the field. So um, we're kind of, we don't know yet what it's going to look like uh, with all of our uh, options, but those are some that stand out. And then I think that in the circle, that's what it comes down to. I hate to admit it to Taryn, but that's what it comes down to. So, um, you know, I think that everyone except Devin is unproven and excited to, to see you know, what this is all about. And so we got a lot of different looks, a lot of different planes. And so I think it's going to be a very complete pitching staff. So Sid Summerdyke and um, Allie Blanchard, a transfer from Princeton, is settling in nicely. And then, um, you know, we got Aisa, a young one who's a lefty, and we haven't seen a lefty in our program in a couple years. So I think that's really exciting. Since Taylor McQuillan, right? Yeah, yeah. Taylor and Yeah, so take us through the personnel there. A lot of new faces. You have Devin returning. So what, what's your bullpen vibe like? What's the energy like? The energy is great in the bullpen. Um, I think with this group, they really understand that they can play off of each other, um, and they all have different looks. And I think this group has kind of taken themselves as a, a unit within the team. Um, Devin has been fantastic in the bullpen in terms of um, being the returner that um, has the experience, and she has taken each of the pitchers under her wing and kind of, um, you know, shared ideas with them and made sure that they understood, like, the expectations, and she's just been really great with this group. I love that when you see a veteran just take a jump, right, to the next level. I feel like you look at her and or at Carly Scoopin, Skaggs, that were kind of the veterans last year, but now it's just like even more so taking those young ones. Um, second year. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> yes. You made it. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> Live to tell about it. <laughs> just a quick reflection for you personally. What would year two head coach Caitlin Lowe tell year one? You know, anybody who asks, I guess I just tell them, um, you know, when we walked, I think collectively, when we walked into our team meeting this year, it felt way more like us and way more like this current team. Um, last year, we were trying to figure out what it looked like to not change too much. It's not broken, um, but still put our stamp on things. And, and man, we just like sat together before that team meeting and I I left that meeting and I just felt like it was more authentic, more ourselves, more what this team embodied. And, 
And this team is different. It's different than anything I've seen at Arizona. They play so much for each other and with joy in everything that they do. They love this game and they love just competing. So I'm excited to see their stamp on, on the game of softball. So um, we're excited. And, and I would even add to Lap's answer, my dark horse has been Devin Nets because I think she came um, back on a mission. And I think when you take over a leadership role, the pressure comes off you and it's about the team. And man, um, I'm excited for, yeah, everybody she's named, but really just to put this lineup together in a million different ways because it's it's Can we've just been taught no yeah. and that's Can the you thing give us a lineup? I think it's gonna I think it's gonna change on the daily and and I think we're gonna use everyone in a lot of games um so it that's exciting to me you also have a smaller roster which you know you see a lot of teams right now, especially just with mm -hmm. still the COVID hangover, some rosters are at 30, 27, 30. 28, 30, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you guys are under 20, which is, right, under 20? Is it 18. 18, mm -hmm. yeah. So is that something that you like having at practice or? <laughs> well, know. certain times, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, certain drills makes it tough, but I love the depth that we do have and everybody just has a purpose and a role and, is valuable to this team right now. And um, the only time it gets scary is when, you know, a couple people aren't available. Um, but for us, like the depth is, is great. And we're gonna have to be strategic about some things um, to keep everybody ready and available in games. But um, I'm just excited about the depth. And the depth's in the versatility. So yeah. when you only have 18 um, and they all only play one position, that could get tough. But we have, you know, two pitchers who hit and, and Two, two who can run, three really that can run bases. Yeah. And then we have, you know, <laughs> infielders. We have five infielders who can play anywhere and then potentially play the outfield too. So like we just have a lot of options. So it never really makes us feel thin. Versatility, yep. athletes. Mm -hmm. Speaking of athletes, just kind of rewind it. Each of you, softball player back in your day, now coaches. <laughs> but I'm just curious, like what, what got you into the sport of softball? I just want to take it really far back and um, we'll kind of just go down the line, starting with Kate and how you found your way to the sport. Well, my dad played baseball growing up. Okay. Softball was the first, um, well, I actually tried gymnastics. It was not for me. I tried a little baton twirling too, not for me. They tried to, you know, help me down the girly route and I was a tomboy through and through. So um, picked up a bat, started t-ball and just had, I mean, it was over for me that the best time um, and my dad was always great about coaching us at that like fun level taught us how to love the game um, passed us off to coaches who knew more about the game when we were like 10 or 11 but um, just really you know taught me how to love a sport and give everything to it and my teammates and um, it was that was it I didn't want to play anything else I wanted to do it 24 7 which Luckily, you can do in California, and it's really just had my heart ever since. I'm sure you would have made a great gymnast. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> no. No? Okay. I cried before my baton twirling competition because I didn't want to wear a leotard walking down the street. <laughs> I mean, who does? <laughs> Wow, <laughs> how'd you get your start? Um, I was a little bit different because I wanted to play everything. So like, I just loved competing. I loved sports. I loved going out in the um, cul-de-sac in my neighborhood and trying to kick everyone's ass and wiffle ball and all the fun games. Say Sorry, you can edit that, right? <laughs> um, just beat all the neighborhood boys, you know, and just, I just loved competing at anything, um, probably to the extreme. But, um, so I played soccer, basketball, uh, cheerleading, gymnastics, tennis, everything growing up, baseball. And then, um, you know, I, a little bit later, uh, as in my childhood, I started to focus a little bit more on softball and soccer. And I was fortunate to have older cousins who played softball competitively. And so um, I actually have a really funny story off camera that I can tell about how I transitioned from baseball to softball. But um, so I always looked up to my cousins. I got to watch them play travel ball. They played for the Fresno Force. I was from Southern California playing baseball. Yeah, they, they still exist too. Um, so I kind of got to see what that was all about and decided to play softball and um, instantly loved it and got more competitive, got some opportunities to play for more some more competitive teams and um, that was it. Like, I loved it. I always wanted to play other th things too, but softball became my passion and it became um, kind of my vision of what my future could be. So I think that's also what held me to the sport is because I got to see my cousins play in college and 
understand that I that could this sport could take me beyond just playing the game at the youth level. So um, it's kind of where my my dream started, and and lucky enough to play for a really long time after that too. That's true. Yep, pro <laughs> career. And then what about you, Terry? Really? <laughs> a little similar to Kate in the sense that I never played another sport. Um, I took, I think, figure skating lessons once or twice when I was li very little. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> figure skating. <laughs> but Don't uh, ask me to when do I now. was four, I was in class and they had a flyer for Cypress Girls softball and I took it home. I played Cypress too. <laughs> Did you really? Yes. <laughs> My first leagues. My first That's so yeah. Yeah. I was on the Teal Seals, my oh. first team. You guys missed each other for like by two years, probably right? Probably two years, yeah. 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 We probably had some overlap. Probably. Yeah. Did you play with Candace Baker? Candace Baker, yeah. that was my first all-star team. Oh. Can the Bakers, both Bakers. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. I totally had to watch Yeah, you play probably there. did. I played there through 10 and under. And then, That's so funny. It's going to be one of those things where you look at the team photos and it's like you see, you're like, oh my gosh, there she is. Yes. She's in totally. my team photo. Actually, did it maybe? look at the team photo and I'm going to be the little girl in like the background. Like in the background, like... <laughs> Who are they? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you have Mark Sparks too? Did yeah. we talk about Mark? Yeah, he was my pitching coach. He told my grandma to stop wasting your money and st to have me stick to catching. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. funny. Cypress yeah. Girls. Yeah, there you I go. I took Sorry. the flyer home, and I'm pretty sure my parents just wanted to get me out of the house <laughs> and have somebody else watch me for two hours of the day. And so um, started playing softball, and that was it. Love it. Wow, that was crazy. You need to go look at photos. You need to call I'm sure there's some, mom and yeah, dad and some see. Sort of crossover. Yeah. I'm going to go check. Uh, so what was the earliest age you all met? Maybe like five? Well, yeah. <laughs> it sounds I mean, like they we met. We were probably at the same met. softball field <laughs> at that complex. Like at some point when I was 10 and you were eight or yeah. whatever, somewhere along there. Do you remember when you all met? Like, I just remember meeting Taryn when we played a CIF high school game against each oh, okay. other. She drilled me in the hand, broke my hands. Didn't know it. Yeah. It's a great story. Yeah. yeah. And then um, I think I kept playing. I think you beat us. Yes, we did. Yeah. <laughs> they both beat me in high school. You kept playing. Um, you actually, I walked you your next Yeah, bat. so I go up and I like can't hold my bat. And I'm like, oh my gosh, just like stand up here and like figure out how to walk. Right? So um, I didn't swing the bat the whole time and she ended up walking me. I was like, thank goodness. And she stole second base. And I stole second base. Yeah. Wow. But, we, but we lost. Yeah. We lost to Luera too yeah, like on our to home field. Up. Yeah, the underdogs playing Foothill High School who had all these uh, studs on their team. That we had like a legit one. everybody D1. Yeah, yeah. They were studs. Anyway, little Luera, we beat them. I don't remember the score. There is a photo that I have on my computer at home, and it's hilarious. It's Caitlin sliding into second and I because I was playing right. shortstop, mm -hmm. and I'm tagging her out. No, safe. I think you were Definitely safe. safe. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, that little Caitlin, we have a, we like, have a, we have a college picture like that too. We do, yeah. And you're like complaining about the call. Probably. <laughs> Obviously. Some things never change. Caitlin, oh, when yeah. she talks about her start, that she was on her dad coached her on the little rascals. Yeah. And I remember My name is Porky. We played yeah, <laughs> they, they had their the yeah, nicknames. nicknames on the back of their jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Little Caitlin was porky. But I remember playing them or being at the same softball field. So, like, we've, because we're only one year apart, we played, we were, like, brought up playing against each other. Yeah. And Panthers gold, and I was on cruisers, and then she was on Gordon's Panthers, and I was on cruisers, also, do you and we remember, were always playing yep. each other. Yep. Do you remember stealth? Yes. So, yeah. our first weekend in travel ball was... Um, playing like we went from t-ball practically to travel ball <laughs> and it was like the little rascals we were just like the cute little team we were not competitive and we ended up playing against this team called stealth which was autumn champions team no way and Gosh. they absolutely like it was like 27 to nothing like just absolutely brutalized us and the well it was 27 to 1 and this is how we scored we my dad was like um <laughs> he's coaching third base and the pitcher's about to throw he's like you're just going to drop your bat like this and we had a runner at third and so I dropped my bat and the pitcher stopped throwing and balked and our runner scored <laughs> 27 to 1 <laughs> I've never seen that that's a trick play yeah sneaky right oh, that's pretty good Dave Lowe with good. all the tricks Dave Lowe <laughs> if you can't coach mechanic yeah. then <laughs> so where are we <laughs> how would you describe each other as, as a player so I would say like <laughs> bouncing <laughs> off the walls, like can't Still stand started still. To sweat. <laughs> high energy. Whether but she's catching her in the infield, doesn't uh, matter. I feel like she's a little bit more mellow okay. behind, the behind the plate. Yeah. Short stuff, you know, she's yeah, everywhere, gotcha. all over the place, super high energy. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the reasons I, I wanted her on our staff is because right. she's 
add something that I, I mean, I'm very like. <laughs> into shark. Yeah. She, they can talk about that very later. Yeah. <laughs> Taryn's just, Taryn's a super competitor, but she's also really light and knows how to like laugh and be loose and trust her stuff. And I don't know, I think we blend well together because we are so different from each other. How would you describe her as a player? <laughs> the same way as a coach. Yeah. Intense, yeah. focused. Um, when she speaks, people listen because she doesn't talk a lot, but when she does talk, it's important and she has something to say. And that's exactly how she was as a player. Um, Lap, I've actually never played with you. Um, no. Always against, against other, you. Yeah. I, would ex I would describe you as just energizer. Um, a little bit loud if you're playing against her. If you're playing against her. But just everywhere and versatile. Well, back in the day, too, like, she played for the California Cruisers, and they had, like... We were loud. All the authentic <laughs> cheers. Like, they made up yes. cheers to, like, rap songs yeah, and, like, just change the words, and you're just, yeah. like... You just, as the other team, you just listen, you're like, okay, you gotta write this yeah. one down. Yeah. Them, but I, I mean, it was like her and yeah. Chess Seavers, if you know that yeah, name, yeah. and, like, I mean, they had all the cool they stuff. Had fun. That's yeah. good. They had fun. Iconic cheers. They gotta mm -hmm. come somewhere, so... Yeah. Um, how did you guys know the transition from player to coach how did you know that you wanted to do this for a living <laughs> it's kind of a big transition and you got to figure out when you want to do it so when did that happen for each of you I feel like and I feel like this might be similar for all of us is that we didn't really know um, but like we had a love for the sport I know for me I was continuing to play beyond college and um, I needed opportunities to train so I started to I was a volunteer at Northwestern, and I was able to get a taste of what this side of it is like uh, while I was still playing, which I feel like hugely benefited me in my coaching uh, journey because I was able to, and as a player, the last few years I played, I was able to see things a little bit different from a coaching perspective and not just a player who's you know, consumed with their development and helping their team win and all of those things. And it was, um, so I think it just kind of happened. Like I went to school not thinking, oh, I'm going to study and get a degree and then be a coach. I was like, I have no idea what I'm going to do, but I love playing and I'm going to keep playing as long as possible and take advantage of any opportunities. And then the coaching thing just naturally evolved for me. And now I can't think of doing anything else. Like I really believe for me, it's how I can make the greatest impact on the world. And maybe this sounds cheesy, but I'm super passionate about it and um, about the game. But I never lose sight of like the fact that we are have a huge responsibility um, with these young humans in the most uh, transitional yeah. part of their lives. And we don't take that lightly. And um, I know I had people who influenced my life through the game at, at, during this time period, um, this age. And so... Uh, that's like, I never want to do anything else because I love the game. And I feel like because I love it so much, I can make the greatest impact on the people, the young people I'm around. Totally cheesy. Totally <laughs> cheesy. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah. Nailed it. Okay. Flip it, cut it, post it. Okay. What are all your degrees in? <laughs> business, administration. American well, studies. psychology and business. I got and business, of, business administration. It was my minor, and then psychology. I got weeded out of the business program a little bit. <laughs> I just hard. decided in the middle that I was like, plot yeah. twist, and yeah. then I go into psychology, <laughs> okay. which is more coaching, I yeah. feel like, anyway. Yeah, right. totally. Although you need some business, too. Yeah. Crunch the <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I feel like we kind of all have a similar story. I was still playing professionally, and then I got the, the director of ops right. position, which... I hated <laughs> very much so just because you know I didn't hate it hate it but um you can't, can't coach, coach at all right. and it's like you're silenced and just you know people would come to me with questions and I couldn't help and mm -hmm. I think I got the itch there um and then I was like anything to get on the field um and that was my volunteer year and and, and everyone asked when I retired from playing like do you miss it do you miss and I was like no like I actually it was a super easy decision for me because I just figured out that I loved the game mm -hmm. in any way I could have it mm -hmm. and it wasn't like performing on the field or yeah I missed my teammates and that interaction but it was the game like I fell in love with the game and I think it's more rewarding I don't know you guys can answer for yourselves but it's more rewarding on this side to help people find that joy in the game mm -hmm. and I just remember graduating feeling like the strongest most confident version of myself that I had ever experienced and like that's what I want to help 
women feel, you know, when they're 22 years old, leaving and conquering whatever they want to conquer, um, you know, whether it be in the softball realm or something completely opposite. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, yeah, that's kind of why I came back. Well, I remember your, my senior year was when you were the director of ops. So <laughs> I'm so was, sorry for all of the no. <laughs> <laughs> meals. <laughs> we were trying to get, we asked for no mayo and there, it was fine. <laughs> only messed up my sandwich. It was the most yeah, was stressful fine. time of my entire life. Dude. Everyone always asked me like, oh, what did she coach? I'm like, no, like she was just in the paperwork and I never got to like play under you for that one year. But yeah. so, um, yeah, it was kind of a funny thing because it was like, Here's Caitlin Lowe, but she's, you know, making, Don't sure, talk to her. making sure we yeah. have the right room. Yeah. At the end of the day, out ordering the pizza. Yeah. Yeah. I was. Making sure we don't miss the buzz. It was a stressful time, yeah. the pizza ordering on time. <laughs> and then, Taryn, how did you know you wanted to coach? Uh, I actually didn't know that I wanted to coach. Um, I was still playing, and um, I was driving back home to California after um, one of the summers, and my sister called me. Um, and she was a junior in high school and committed to California Baptist University. And she called me and she goes, hey, do you want to be my college coach? <laughs> and I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> um, but I hadn't really gotten to see her um, play because uh, as she was growing up, I was in college. And so I didn't really get to watch her. So I told her I would go in for an interview. They said, you will have a salary. I said, nice, <laughs> I'm in. Um, and so that's kind of how I got into coaching and I loved it. I was like, ooh, this is fun. I enjoy this. I enjoy, you know, teaching. Um, and I just fell in love with it. And so that's kind of, uh, I blame my sister. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, just last question for the three of you, reflecting on last year, coaching together for the first time, you mm -hmm. know, we saw the postseason run that you guys went on. <laughs> How special was that for you three to kind of have that bond, just year one, have that really special run? I mean, I was there looking up and Harper's on Paul's <laughs> shoulders and Lincoln's in the stands, you know, pass fire in the mouth and everything. It was just, you guys were on the road for like a month, it seemed like. So mm -hmm. just what was that run like for you guys that you can kind of have for your first year? I think it was crazy. I mean, yeah. it was like a wild, wild run. <laughs> and you didn't even, like for me, I hadn't even coached at this level. And I didn't even really know Taryn. Like, we knew each other just through being in the softball world together. Um, so not knowing what to expect, it was a wild, wild year. And we had a lot of transition. It wasn't just her becoming the head coach and transitioning into that role, me transitioning to being the only non-alum on staff mm -hmm. and, like, taking on the D1 level and her having a child in the middle of all right. of it. Yes. Um, we were just on media day. <laughs> yeah. we were on media day. The texts are blowing up. Lincoln's here. Yeah. yeah. Well, we were crazy. just talking yesterday after practice how we were doing the bullpens <laughs> at this time right. of year. Yeah. Right. She wasn't here. And it that was, was really, you know, bullpen appreciation time. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> it was a lot. It was a lot. And we are not mechanical yeah. pitching geniuses. So, yeah, it's been, I think the adversity is what made it special, to right. be honest. Mm -hmm. Just going through, um, what everyone went through, the team included. And, you know, there are so many things we were kind of <laughs> talking about this morning in PET with our staff that, mm -hmm. you know, our whole staff kind of changed within that season. Um, so, yeah, I think the hard times made the good times even better. Mm -hmm. Love that. Well, um, ending on a uplifting note, <laughs> we're going to do a little segment at the end of the podcast I call Quick Like a Cat. So I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> Or say, we can call it quick like Kate. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to give you a question. And here's the first thing that comes to mind. Okay, we'll just go down the road this way. Oh, okay, I got to go first. first. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you are yes. the quickest. Yes, Kate. <clears throat> like quick, Kate. Quick is like Kate. Okay. Quick is like Kate. <laughs> Nicknames growing up. <laughs> Flocka. <laughs> Flocka? Yeah. Okay. That's your, that used to be your email, right? It or is. So it is. is. <laughs> okay, this is embarrassing. My dad made my email um, when I first got into school. So that was my student email and went to HR, tried to get it changed. Won't let me change it. I've been trying to do the same thing. Yeah. But so you let us keep with email you forever. Freshman you can have an alias. That's what mine is. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I go do, do some things after this? Yeah. Uh -huh. Where does that, what does that come from? It means skinny in Spanish and so I was porky? like this big. <laughs> Porky, yeah, don't ask, don't ask questions. That's not okay, part of the okay, segment. Okay, okay, okay. 
<laughs> Make him turn up. Can I say two? Yeah. Two came to mind. Yeah. So Lolo, uh, my name's Lauren, so Lo, right. Lolo. Okay. Um, and then Bellhead. <laughs> <laughs> and literally stuck with me for a long time. You've all, we've all had a bad haircut that either our mom and <laughs> gave us, right? See, you all reacted. Mom or grandma, okay? My grandma took me to the hair, hair salon with her. And then she's like, Lolo, do you want to get a haircut? And I was literally like, no, 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 no. But I didn't want to disappoint my grandmother. So I just went with it. And We're going to anyway, need a picture. It was, yes. I will, I'll send you a picture. Also, for the first year of my life, I had long hair, like, hair that just would stick straight up. And would, Anyway, bell head. Okay. So, bad haircut, and it was in the shape of a bell. And my cousin, who I grew up with, he named me bell head. And then it literally... <laughs> the it's the worst. It was like, <laughs> the worst. I so, would have stuck with Lolo. Yeah, and just Lolo, ended no, the question. I am, you know what? I am proud of who I am. I am okay. It was a character-building experience. I can't wait to tell the team about your new nickname. <laughs> gonna, I'll find pictures. We're going to introduce you when you... When you guys take the field opening day, we're going to introduce the, and the and coaching third base. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren Bell. Sure, that would get a <laughs> <laughs> rowdy round of applause. Oh my gosh. Okay, and Jared, nicknames. Um, up. My family used to call me Magoo. <laughs> um, just because I didn't have any hair for like two years, mm -hmm. the first years of my life. This is hair so thing. Hair thing. Thing. Yeah. Oh my a gosh. bad haircut. Yeah. Mine was lack no of hair. hair. Okay. Um, so that lasted for, for a couple of years. But Why really? Magoo? Because of that. Is there a There's character? There's like a that, character like cartoon. A cartoon? Mm -hmm. Old man cartoon, I think. All right. Basically, they were you've never seen. You've like never seen Mr. Mr. Magoo? Magoo? Yeah. Oh, I guess. That's the oldest of all of us. By one year. <laughs> still, still Nine works. months, maybe, actually. Oh, yeah. oh, my gosh. Okay, amazing. We just ended right there, honestly. Um, who is the most game-ready of you three? Who can give me a full seven? Who can give me one solid inning, and who can give me a full seven Physically? Innings? Physically. Oh. I, I think... I don't know. I think I could do it too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Full well, seven. <laughs> I don't know if I could run to first base, uh, but the I... sprinting, the fast twitch, it's going to be tough. Yeah. Could you pitch an inning? Yeah. 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 That would put this me to time work I'll in the outfield. Not though. to tear my ACL. Okay. <laughs> Pitching in the game. That's right. Oh wow. The crazy thing is, like, you go, if right. you go to do things that you used to do, it just doesn't happen quite the no. same. Yeah. So, like, no. if I am talking to our infielders and I like get down to like move. It just I think the hitting well. comes back easier. I, the alumni games, it always feels easier to just like react. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The running and the yeah, quick the twitch fast is twitch. not, <laughs> unless you want not to pull everyone's Okay, but yeah. you guys are, I mean, you guys are all active. We're competitors, so we would, we'll kick anybody's butt if he throws. Yeah, yeah, we would hit the next yeah. day, yeah. but if you were like, let's <laughs> go, we got to play seven, we're like, game on. Yeah, Emily, give me some cleats. Yeah, yeah. Maybe molded, not metal, okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I'm going all in on the spikes. We're going to slide in a second. You're not going to hit. <laughs> Did you wear metal or um, the plastic or the rubber, I guess, what they call them? Metal, metal early metal. and then yeah. molded late. Molded me, in like the pro I, You get old and it hurts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. like, gotta They don't tell it. you that that no. helps until later. No. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Figure that out later. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you guys were not the generation of walk-up song. And the reason I know that is because <sighs> my class had to fight Coach Candrea to get walk-up songs. It was like core memory between sophomore and junior year. <laughs> Can I tell you, though, we didn't even listen to music during batting practice in practice. I don't think we did in my like, freshman year. That wasn't yeah. a thing yeah. either. Like, it was silent. Yeah. And now I can't even imagine. Right. Like, if it's silent, I'm right. like, what is happening? Right. As a BP pitcher, well, I'm like, let's go. Right. Give me good vibes. Like, come on. I need the music. So what I would your walk-up song be? Hmm. I know my well. I know mine. Seven Nation Army. Ooh. <laughs> That's what? the one I always tell the girls to get. <laughs> and I say, they yeah, they should. I had it. I had that on the USA team for a while. Okay. It's just like, boom, right, boom, yeah. Boom, and you can like, clap to it and stuff. Yeah. Yes, I, I'm. I've begged the girls to use that because I think our fans would really love it. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. You want to give the fans something they can like something feel they, part of a little yeah. bit. It's a hard, it's a hard two. question. Okay. Happened to our heartbreaker. <laughs> this is not a hard question. We're there. She's Whitney she's Houston, Queen of the Night. If I'm okay. feeling it that day. Okay. Well, they do get two, so that could be your Friday, Sunday, Saturday. It could be Queen of the Night type of thing. Okay. I don't know. What should my walk up song be? <laughs> no, we okay. won't. Okay. You know, the only thing we did get when we were in school, and you probably got it too, was anything like if you got on bass. Your song played? Did you have that? No. 
So mine was get low. <laughs> so if I got on bass, they would play that. Danny probably. Okay. Do you remember did you that? Did you choose that or did they? They chose it. They like, it, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good one. But that wouldn't be my one that's marketing. So I don't know. Yeah. Get we'll low. use that. Yeah. When you walk up to yes. to the Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Get low. Okay. We'll think the about it. The Sandlot theme. I like the Sandlot theme when the umpire meeting yeah. happens. I oh, think I laugh you. every time. <laughs> it's very the vibes. <laughs> yeah. Um, we kind of went over this a little bit, but if you didn't play softball, what sport do you think you would have gravitated towards? Maybe not baton twirling? No. Or figure skating? Soccer. Soccer for I you. I'd be on the U.S. Women's National Team. I okay. won a couple yes. World Cups. Yes. I, yeah. Yes. I do. I, I always yes. watch Endorsement soccer with deals. Paul, and I'm right. like, I could do this. And he's like, no. I mean, <laughs> and I'm like, I just feel like I could beat somebody. I don't know if I could like score, but I'm like gonna run past you. Right. <laughs> and then yeah. Kick the ball like a yeah. million feet wide. Yeah. Like but he's like, defender, he's like, right? you can't run for like longer than a mile. And I'm like, yeah. Well, just put me in. I'll score and Sprint? then take me out. Yeah. 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 Okay. So <laughs> two for soccer. <laughs> two for so three for soccer. No. Okay. Oh, no. Um, no. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, probably, I would say tennis. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Or golf. Okay. You're just trying to make some money now. Basically, <laughs> yeah. yes. I think volleyball is fun too. Mm -hmm. High yeah, energy. Yeah. I love watching volleyball. Okay. Um, and then last question. As a youngster, when someone said Arizona softball, who came to mind? Which player came to mind for you when you were growing up? Well, you grew up in the, the 90s. Like that was, you know. Allison Johnson. Time. Yeah. Okay. Allison Johnson. Tony Mascarenas, mm. I always remember, okay. like, watching her play. I, like, I can picture yes. World Series moments coming to mind right now. The braids. Her, yep. And, the like, braids. her intensity at the play. Like, I can picture her stance. And, mm. and then I ended up playing with her for a year on a summer on the USA team. So that was cool. But, okay. Mm -hmm. Jenny. I mean, her dad was my pitching coach, too. So <laughs> That's true. I would watch her even when she was in high school. So Yeah. Good answers. And Erica Hansen Barnes, obviously, yes. Erica. because she's our boss. Erica, <laughs> of course. Hey, she came out to our wiffle ball game this yeah. year, and, and I mean, you talk she about being game one. ready. Yeah. yeah, she hit it. Yeah, she's drive. the most she game ready. ready. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because the all of our girls, so Erica, Chrissy, and then Harper's playing on all the same <sighs> team. So it's like the most intense. Mm -hmm. Nine and under <laughs> softball the most experience. Intense is yeah. yeah, yeah. Ten you is intense. Yeah, they They're practiced every day last it. week. Every day. Wow. Yeah. It was like it was hell week. It was forty <laughs> degrees. <laughs> it was forty degrees. <laughs> it was <hell> week. <laughs> All the parents were like, "What is this sorcery?" <laughs> I love that. How are you guys balancing the you know ten you and then you've got coming up on his birthday? Or he just turned birthday? one. Yeah, uh, two weeks ago. How's that balance? I'm not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's a, uh, every time I think I have it right, he changes. <laughs> right. So like, it'll be two weeks. And I'm like, okay, I have a schedule now. Mm -hmm. And then he starts walking or he, yeah. I don't know, Stop he does, he does something <laughs> different. And I'm just like, all right, you got to come up with a new plan. So I just love um, seeing working on the stands. The, I just, yeah. You know, I just think it's cool that around. they're part of the family mm -hmm. as a whole. And like, I went to Harper's softball practice and like, Tilly Barnes has like an Ali Skaggs leg kick and like Harper's yes. doing moves that she sees on the field. And it's like, it just, I love that they're role models to them because they, whether you think they're paying attention or not, they are watching and, and just what a cool group to be able to emulate. Yeah, if you can see it, you can be it mm -hmm. type of thing like you were talking about earlier with your cousins and mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll just say Wildcats open the 2023 season on February 9th. And you can buy tickets at ArizonaWildcats.com slash SB. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank Good you. luck this Thank season. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go. go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.